In 2020, the people of Chuuk State in Micronesia are planning to hold a referendum on independence. This is a big deal for the Pacific, and it's not just about Chuuk or Micronesia, but it could also have global ramifications. Firstly, let's get down with the geography. The Pacific Ocean is huge, and it's divided into several regions. Some of these are Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. Micronesia is made up of thousands of islands and atolls. There are several US territories here, including Guam, as well as countries like Palau, Nauru, the Marshall Islands, and of course, the Federated States of Micronesia. The Federated States of Micronesia is a country which has four states, as shown on their flag. These are Yap, Chuuk, Pohnpei, and Koh Sri. It is this state, Chuuk, that plans to have a referendum on independence. So why do the pro-independence supporters in Chuuk want to secede? The Chuuk State Political Status Commission, or CSPSC, outlines three main reasons. Politics, culture, and economics. Politically, because of the way the Micronesian Congress operates, people in Micronesia elect 10 representatives for Congress, plus one extra for each state, regardless of population. The president is then elected by the Congress, not by popular vote. Some in Chuuk feel as though this unfairly disadvantages their state, as it is the most populous. And people in Chuuk do elect fewer representatives per person than Yap and Koshai, but actually Pohnpei elects the fewest per person. The CSPSC argues that cultural differences between the four states make it too hard to agree on national policies. There are also concerns about Chuuk losing its unique cultural identity while being part of a federation. Finally, economically, independent supporters in Chuuk feel that they are not receiving their fair share of revenue from the federal government. This perceived inadequate division of money has been blamed for lacklustre infrastructure throughout the state. And speaking of money, being a tiny nation of just over 100,000 people, where does this money even come from? Well, that brings us to the global ramifications bit. The Federated States of Micronesia is in a compact of free association with the US. This means that the US gives the country money, as well as giving Micronesia's citizens the right to live and work in the US, in exchange for total authority and responsibility over defense. At the moment, this is about 110 million US dollars per year which is a lot of money for a country whose total GDP is about $350 million per year. You might be wondering why the US cares so much about having military control in the Pacific on behalf of Micronesia, especially when the US territory of Guam, complete with several large military bases, is so close by. One of the answers is if the US holds military control in Micronesia, that means that China doesn't. If Chuuk were to become independent and fail to reach another agreement with the US, that would open the door for other benefactors, such as China, to take over a similar role as bankroller with military-based benefits. It could also even open the door to Taiwan, who has also been shoring up support in the Pacific. For example, when they loaned neighboring Palau money to revamp their capital. So what would Chuuk look like as an independent country? Well, it would be one of the smallest countries on Earth, with a total land area of only two-thirds the size of Liechtenstein, or about two-thirds the size of Washington DC. However, its exclusive economic zone would cover vast swathes of the Pacific Ocean. The population would be just about 50,000 people, and the economy would still heavily rely on foreign aid, although fishing licensing could be a significant source of income, as well as tourism, although growth in this sector is hindered by isolation and relative lack of infrastructure. And speaking of foreign aid, if Chuuk were to become independent, arranging funding to replace or re-implement the current US agreement would take top priority. It may seem like an inopportune time to be negotiating with the US, with a president that is self-proclaimedly America first. However, the whole country of Micronesia may be in the exact same situation in 2023 when the current Compact of Free Association is due to expire. It also seems as if Chuuk and Micronesia as a whole might be disadvantaged by its tiny size 
in any negotiations with foreign powers. But it may be able to leverage each of these global powers' misgivings towards one another to carve itself out a deal. Or at least this is what independent Chuk may be hoping to do. The referendum has already been postponed twice, from 2015 and from 2019. So firstly, we will wait and see if it goes ahead in 2020. Even if it does go ahead, a result in favour of independence is not a sure thing. Several high-profile Micronesians are against the idea, including former presidents Huglagam and Mori, the latter of which set up a task force on unity, and current president Panuelo, whose inaugural address in 2019 described the nation of the Federated States of Micronesia as a canoe, different islands bound together. If the vote does go ahead and independence is voted for, it could then trigger a race between benefactors, each country trying to solidify their Pacific military presence. Will funding for the new republic be supplied by the US or China? Will another overseas benefactor, such as Taiwan, Australia or New Zealand step in? And if the US is involved, will Chuk be able to negotiate another compact of free association? Or will they just be left with Kofefe? Either way, the people of Chuk are scheduled to have their say in 2020, and the rest of the world will have to wait and see what the outcome might be. Let me know what you think in the comments, especially if you're from Micronesia. And if you want to support the channel, I'll leave a link to the merch store in the description. You can find geography t-shirts there, including the island of Borneo drawn as a dinosaur, because you know that's what it looks like some EEZs of the South Pacific drawn as bubbles, and my new Maritime Zones infographic poster. Geography-themed t-shirts are fun, but I'd like to make more posters in the future. It costs money to pay designers, so if you like that idea, please show your support. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.